Kia ora. Morena, everyone. Thank you so much for your time this morning or whenever you're watching this session. I'm Austin, and I'll be taking you through what it takes to earn one of our Toy 2 Carbon Marks. We've got 30 minutes together, so this will serve as more of an introduction. Please put your questions in the Q&A at any point throughout the session. We have some time for quick fire questions at the end. We'll do our best to cover uh, as much as possible in the short time this morning, but we will share any questions, um, we'll share answers that we didn't get to in the recording um, or any further resources if needed. So let's get started. Now, in case you aren't that familiar with us yet, Toy2 EnviroCare, we're a purpose-led organization. Toy2 is a subsidiary of Manaki Fenua, a New Zealand government-owned research institute. We really hold fast to those roots in science. We are a business, but we're a purpose-driven one. Everything we've done for the last 22 years is aimed at helping organizations shift their impact on the environment from negative to positive. We prioritize purpose and profit equally. All of our revenue is reinvested back into the business. How can we keep expanding our impact? Impact is really why we're here today. So let's dive in. Globally, we've committed to limiting climate heating to 1.5 degrees Celsius. That target is based on scientific projections of what we have to adapt to under different emission levels. And I think it's really helpful when we can take that 1.5 goal and put it in a more meaningful context to us as individuals, because in our daily lives, often a degree, even a few degrees, isn't that drastic. But when we're looking at the climate, even a fraction of a degree really matters. So right now, compared to the baseline that we use, which is pre-industrial temperatures, New Zealand is now 1.26 degrees warmer. Globally, there's a lot of variance. It averages out to about 1.1 degree warmer. So really, we're just barely over a degree, right? A few fractions of a degree over that one point. Think of the impacts that we've seen in the last year or two as the temperature has really crept above that one degree mark, right? A few fractions of a degree. Think about the news cycles you've seen recently compared to five years ago, 10 years ago, your childhood. You know, globally, we're having heat waves, extreme weather patterns, extreme events, droughts, all of these things as regular news items. The frequency of billion dollar events, so events that cost at least a billion dollars in response, is rapidly increasing. This year is likely to be the warmest year in 125,000 years. So I think really the point here is that Everything about this, about this climate change, is unprecedented for humanity. Business as usual is going to have to change no matter what we do at this point. And what we can do is look at the worst and the best that can happen and plan accordingly. That 1.5 target is the best of the worst case scenarios. The 1.5 target essentially gives us our budget. It's a very real set of constraints that we have to operate within. But within that budget, there's a lot of possibility to innovate, really ask, you know, how might we create that new business as usual that we want rather than being forced to adapt to one that we really don't want? So what is that budget? It works out to have sort of three key milestones that we really need to hit. Emissions at a global level must peak no later than 2025. We have about a year left, and then emissions globally need to be going downhill. That downhill slope needs to be sharp enough to get us down to about half by 2030, and then as close to zero as possible by 2050, We're looking at like at least 90% reduced. And that's at the global systemic level. If we can do that, and we can, there's a lot of really good news stories coming out increasingly showing that this is possible and there's some good trends. Um, but we have the best chance to limit heating to 1.5, right, and avoid a lot of those catastrophic runaway impacts. Um, if we collectively step up, those milestones are still achievable. We also know that the sooner we get started, the easier and the gentler the transition is going to be. We have a lot more time to experiment with unknowns, build out the investment cases, collaborate with suppliers, 
The transition becomes one that is going to elevate your opportunities a lot more than your risks the sooner you get started. I do want to emphasize this is about opportunities as much as risk. Things like renewable energy, it's now cheaper than fossil fuels, right? So not only is it going to be a win for jobs and for the economy, for your bottom line, um, we're also going to avoid that pollution and improve a lot of health outcomes. All of these sort of emerging new technologies, collaborations, you know, new products, new revenue streams, all of these doors are going to open up here and they can help us create a really positive cascade rather than a negative one. We can create a much better world, ensure our organizations are future-proofed, and likely we're going to find entirely new revenue streams, efficiencies, opportunities along the way. That 1.5 world is giving us the best chance to thrive. And it isn't just political negotiations at some UN event that might be coming up very soon. It's not about scientific research. This is actually just good business sense. It's sound investment choices, risk resiliency for your operations, um, consumer and supplier expectations, climate performance. Uh, we're seeing it really as an indicator of resilience and it's increasingly a key input for investors, insurers, um, financial institutions, job seekers, consumers. More and more, someone like an investor, a loan officer, they're using climate performance and claims to understand how resilient an organization is. How prepared are they to face the crises, you know, kind of ahead of us? Is this a strong business to back? Toy 2's role in all of this is to give business and organizations the science and the tools that they need to improve their carbon and environmental performance. And then we endorse your work for you. You can think of us sort of as a map of, you know, which pathways up this 1.5 mountain are best suited for your needs and objectives. We create that map thanks in part to our decades of experience navigating the science, leading practice, working with real businesses, there are so many standards and frameworks out there, all of which are aiming to create consistent shared definitions on what good looks like. Some of them have really narrow focus, some of them are really broad. We monitor all of those inputs and we actually contribute directly to quite a few of those frameworks and standards out there. But we're not just about that theory on paper. Since 2001, we have verified over um, 4,400 greenhouse gas inventories. That means we've looked really closely at real business activities and operations generating about 265 million tons of emissions. We can take that direct experience with lead practice and real businesses. And we pull those things together to create the Toy2 Carbon Certification Program and that is independently accredited by JASAMS, our regional accreditation body. Our certification program is designed to endorse climate performance claims as legitimate against the applicable frameworks. The claims are substantiated as one of our three carbon marks. So when you hear carbon marks, we're talking about one of these three. Toy 2 carbon reduce, Toy 2 net carbon zero, and Toy 2 climate positive. Anytime you see one of those marks, you know that that company is adhering to the Toy 2 carbon standard. Our standard uses ISO 1464 part one and the GHG protocol as that sort of accounting foundation to track baselines and metrics. And then it builds on those standards with a range of other best practice, climate science and learnings from working with real businesses over the last couple decades. Since we first introduced the earliest form of the program, we've gone through three major revisions of what it means to earn one of our carbon marks. Each time we've revised, it's been to ensure that our requirements and the rest of the materials that we provide are continuing to give our members legitimacy. What does good climate performance look like? How can you prove you're in alignment? Toy2 Elevate is the fourth major change. We released it a few months ago and we'll be certifying against it from 2025. Elevate is designed to make sure that Toy2 certified climate action continues to be what the climate needs and what the market expects. So you can make these claims with confidence. While we developed Elevate, 
lead practice, scrutiny, greenwashing um, accusations, all of these things were really converging around a few key themes. And we made sure we built all of those into our Elevate standard. It comes down to assessing the full range of climate impacts, decarbonizing in line with those scientific limits to keep heating to 1.5, and ensuring the business is fully aligned to those goals. And that includes things like looking at transition plans and adaptation, but also things like engagement and advocacy. While we, we will be formally certifying against the new standard from 2025, we already have members who are stepping up to deliver some or all of their performance to that standard. The Toy2 Collective is one of climate leaders. It's such a privilege working with these leaders as they build these more efficient, resilient businesses, as well as stepping up for the climate. But leadership, it doesn't have to feel out of reach. A program like ours gives you the toolkit so that you too can be a leader. I think, I think implementation really requires confidence. What do I do? How do I do it? Otherwise, it can be all too easy to freeze or delay while you're just trying to figure out exactly what, what should I be doing in this space. And then, of course, this, uh, you know, climate performance is on the same table as all of the other pressures facing your business right now. You know, cost of living, recruitment, retention, other incoming regulations or legislation, you know, hitting project deadlines, supplier consumer demands, that range of challenges, those competing priorities, they mean that sometimes climate work is considered maybe an add-on or an extra or a not yet. But we've been working with businesses for over 20 years, and we can tell you that the best performing companies, they know that all of those challenges can be related and climate performance can be the thread across there. It can help you with cost savings, with staff retention and engagement, innovation, development. It's really a win-win-win to build this resilient, future-proofed, efficient business that's ready for any challenge ahead. The Toy2 Carbon Certification Program can help build that capability and confidence across your people, across your organization, so that you can implement and really step up into that leadership role. Let's look a little bit more specifically now at our program and our standard. So when an organization signs up to the carbon program, we provide access to rules, tools, materials, guidance, expertise, um, all of which will then guide a business, an organization to complete an annual cycle. And the cycle is one of continual improvement. So once um, you've come in and you've laid out your plans, you assess your impacts, your achievements to date, you've developed some commitments going forward, um, we then provide a third party assurance engagement to sort of check that that work is accurate, complete, compliant, make sure you can close any gaps if you need to. Then you, we issue a certification pack. You get verified copies of your work, certificate, you know, summary report, the carbon marks themselves. The carbon marks include the ISO standard so that um, you can really easily make these very consistent, comparable claims in any market across your supply chain um, anywhere in the world. Certification is then maintained by repeating the cycle annually, showing continual improvement for your impacts, for your accuracy, for your performance. Continual improvement, I've said this about 20 times now, it's really key. Climate performance is all about momentum. None of us are perfect yet. We all have to keep making progress. How can you do better today than tomorrow, than tomorrow again? And it builds up momentum over time. If we're all doing this, that collective momentum is going to lead to massive change. Um, we'll dive in and look at this a little bit more specifically, each of these steps under Elevate, that fourth version of the standard, which we're actively transitioning our membership towards. Elevate, Elevate is gonna ask you to do more to really embed climate thinking as part of decision-making, you know, putting it in governance and strategy operations really thinking about what your business could be in the coming years so that it's future-proofed no matter the scenario we face. Meanwhile, you'll be building out efficiencies, finding cost savings, you know, driving innovation, opening up some new markets quite possibly, or keeping doors open to existing markets, um, building trust with customers, with suppliers, robust risk resilience, 
boosting staff retention, engagement. I mean, there's there's such a wealth of benefits in this space. So the first step is about assessing a baseline. And that starts with quantifying your greenhouse gas emissions, the ways your business is impacting the climate. All business activities have emissions associated with them. You map out those activities and then you can quantify emissions through a series of calculation methods, depending on the kind of data and information that you have. Emissions can be more or less direct and they're classified by how direct they are and what kind of activity generated them. And then these things are often grouped together into something, uh, one of the three scopes or six categories, depending on which framework you're reporting under, under Elevate. All of our members will be accounting for that full set of emissions, including out into the value chain. Value chain accounting, it tends to be where the biggest impacts are, but also some of the hardest challenges, both to get quality data and to affect change. So continual improvement really plays a key role here as we're engaging and collaborating over time. And we do provide calculation software and tools to support that value chain accounting, um, as well as your direct emissions accounting. As well as assessing and planning how your organization touches the climate, we're also encouraging um, members to assess how the climate will touch them. This will be mandatory work for our climate positive members. Now, this refers to climate related risks and opportunities. What might you face in different climate scenarios? How can you plan to mitigate risks, maximize opportunities? And this work is really most effective. It's best done when it's becomes part of wider organizational governance, strategy, risk management, um, any of those existing frameworks you have. It can really help you build a much more resilient business, a really strong climate plan, as well as uh, a much stronger business plan. Um, this process really can add so much value to your business. If you're also a signatory to the Climate Leaders Coalition here in New Zealand, maybe you have climate related disclosure obligations, other kind of pressures from supply chain maybe, this could well be something you're already looking into, and I hope you're starting to see the value here. Um, we will be providing some tools and some guidance to our members to help them start that process and start embedding it across their organizations. Once you've assessed impacts, you can set targets, make plans. What are you going to do about these things? Under Elevate, all reduction targets will be in line with limiting heating to 1.5 degrees. And that's going to include both near and long term targets. Uh, in this case, near-term targets are typically five to 10-year horizons. Long-term targets for us means setting a net zero commitment for no later than 2050. That means reducing emissions by at least 90% and neutralizing any remaining emissions with removals from that point forward. Our clients will also be developing the pathways between you know, now and those targets. What are those wiggly lines to get there? And those pathways are really um, the opportunity to start planning for things like, you know, when is your fleet due for renewal? When might you be moving offices or need to set up a new office? Are you updating facilities at some point? Um, new product lines launching, investment cases come in, um, get funding. Looking at those milestones, helping you plan between A and B. And we provide tools as well to help set targets and develop those pathways and make those plans. One of the most important tools in the year to head years ahead, really, will be um, collaboration, collective action. This isn't something that we can effectively do in isolation. The Elevate standard is also going to ask members to flex their engagement muscles, and that includes things like lobbying, advocacy, and equivalent activities. This is something that historically hasn't always been um, top of mind when it comes to carbon accounting. Um, but using our voice is one of the most powerful tools we have to create change across value chains, communities, sectors, these, the wider systems change that's going to set us up for success here. It's also something that we're really increasingly seeing as an expectation for anyone making claims. Scrutiny around greenwash, um, you know, explorations of, of corporate claims, questions here. They're asking these questions around what else is going on in that organization? Is it all fully aligned? Um, for any organization that does this work and finds some misaligned engagement, and that can be true often where climate action is seen as a side project, maybe it's just a comms project, um, even just simply because of the size of a company, right? It's not always intentional. It can be completely innocently accidental. Um, but this is getting more and more attention in the marketplace. 
We're starting to see things like formal complaints, accusations of greenwash, um, some indications of potential legal action. Uh, it's really something to be mindful of no matter what work you're doing in this space. <clears throat> we do provide guidance to help members assess that kind of map. Um, what are you doing now in this space? Um, making any plans you need to, to get it fully aligned, seeing where there might be some opportunities to really maximize um, effectiveness. So then we're going jumping back out to this big cycle here. Uh, it's on a rolling basis. So you produce an annual report of your inventory, your commentary on your performance, your plans. You work through an assurance engagement to earn and then maintain certification annually, improving over time. Uh, now, the specific costs, resources, and time spent, they do vary quite a lot. Um, I've got some indications for you here. If you'd like a more specific estimate for your organization, we'd be really happy to help you with that, because um, I know this is quite a big range that I've put on the screen here. We work with micro, small businesses, all the way up to multinational corporates. Um, so we have a huge range of packages that can suit your, your needs, depending on what they are. We do have a free tool to get you started. If you've never looked at climate um, accounting before, um, Toy2 Carbon Assess, which you can access via our website. Um, we have a range of other advisory validation services, you know, depending on your specific needs. But if you are ready to make climate performance claims, if you have some obligations in this space, um, you're going to need certification. And for certification, we have a series of membership packages. I've put the most common ones here. The um, price is based on the size and the complexity of your footprint. So what kind of support are you going to need? What kind of emission factors are you going to need? What is the audit going to look like? How complex is that? How many sites do you have? That kind of thing. Membership will always include access to the standard itself, the climate knowledge library, which is always growing, access to our calculation and reporting software, if you'd like to use that. Um, if you opt in, then um, any support required around procuring and canceling quality carbon credits. You get dedicated account management. Um, and then there's also fees around the annual assurance and certification process. Those ones are based on time spent. So there's a real opportunity to improve efficiencies over time and kind of reduce those costs as well. I also want to note, I don't have them on the screen here. We do have specific packages for any climate reporting entities. If you need to operate within the CRD regime, just let us know that. We have specific options tailored to those needs. Now, as far as resources, how much time is this going to spend? How much internal resources is going to cost? Um, many businesses don't have full-time resource allocated to this project, right? So we see a lot of companies just chipping away at the work um, once they join, maybe a few hours a week here and there where they can find the time. Um, in that kind of uh, cadence, fully ready for an, their first audit, maybe six, nine months, um, and that's even if you have no prior sustainability experience, no expertise in this space, just completely fresh. Where a business does have some more resource they can put towards it, um, maybe they have a sort of some deadlines to hit, especially if there's really good business intelligence or records already in place um, or internal expertise or experience, it can absolutely be much quicker than that. We work with plenty of companies who come to us, they have specific deadlines or they've already kind of done a lot of uh, mahi in the space. They're able to set up a project plan to achieve those tighter deadlines, very possible. And that first year, that that tends to be, for many companies, that tends to be the hardest. Um, usually your resource is focused on getting the baseline and the context right, really sort of nailing that work there. And then from there, that gets much more efficient. You're building up some standard processes, procedures across the business, and then your internal resource will then shift more towards um, implementation and improvement of your plans and your performance. There's a, there's a big challenge ahead of us. There's also a big opportunity facing us. Strong climate performance is a must have for any organization that wants to remain viable, competitive, and relevant in this space. You really need to understand what good looks like, have the capability and the confidence to implement that work, um, make strong claims that are illustrating why your commitments aren't just you know, audacious goals, but they're very achievable, they're believable. We see so many greenwash accusations now around things like a business having a strong commitment, but they can't, they haven't yet shown how their business model, their plans are going to make that viable, believable. Scrutiny is getting a lot more sophisticated, and I don't want that to put you off. You should still absolutely be talking about your work with transparency. 
Um, but having independent backing, that third party backing, the confidence that you aligned with the latest and best practice, um, that is so key. And we can help you with that. We demystify good climate performance. We help you step up to that leadership level, and then we'll endorse your claims as legitimate. Now, I know some questions have already started coming through. Um, please put those in the Q&A as you think of them. We're gonna do some uh, questions now in whatever remaining time we have. If we don't get to your question, we will send answers through when we send through the recording. So please put those in the Q&A box and we'll have a bit of a, a chat. Got a couple questions to start with. Please keep adding those in the, uh, the Q&A box, please. So the first question here, does the TOY2 certification assess third-party businesses through the entire supply chain? Um, so we, we can, yes. Um, and so often what we're doing with businesses is we're looking, um, the business has gone through and kind of assessed their full supply chain, um, potentially down into their customer and that end of their value chain as well. And then we're coming in and checking their work in that space. Um, in some cases, uh, other companies within your value chain are also working with us or they have their own pre-verified work. And so those things might either come through as pre-verified data. You might have a specific emissions factor for a supplier. Um, it might be something that we're working with both of those parties. And, and we know we have that kind of the, the information sharing becomes a lot easier. Uh, the supply chain is a space where everyone is really focusing right now globally on how do we make this easier to share data appropriately, um, to allocate responsibilities, to kind of make this easier, more accurate. Um, globally, it's a big focus right now. And we're seeing a lot of really cool things happening in this space uh, to, to make this easier for that collaboration. Um, but yeah, absolutely. There's um, You can get your full supply chain done. Um, you can also even do it from a more of the product life cycle perspective and get a product or a service life cycle certified um, for a really specific look at that full range of impacts. Uh, let's see here. Question, Does uh, did I say that the TOY2 certification incorporates ISO 14001? Uh, I did not, or if I did, I misspoke, sorry. Um, 14064 Part 1. Um, so the ISO standards, the International Standards Organization, the 14,000 series are all environmental related. 14,001 is around an environmental management system. We do have a separate certification program that can help you with those needs if, um, if a management system is really what you're looking at. Um, for greenhouse gases and for climate, um, the greenhouse gas accounting is 14,064 part one. Part three is the one we use for how we validate and verify your work. And part one is the one that you use for your accounting practices. There are so many standards out there. <laughs> Uh, right. Another question here. Um, would you do a pre-audit or is that part of working through the program? Uh, both, I think. Um, so we have done work where we've come in and we've done maybe like something like a gap analysis or some sort of a pre-audit to see where are you right now and what might you need to fill in? What gaps do you need to fill before you feel like you're ready? Absolutely some way, something that we've done in um plenty of times before. That often works really well if you're a bigger business too and you are, you know, you maybe have some existing work and you're not quite sure how far along you are. It can be part of working through the program as well. Um, and your account manager can do some work with you to kind of help give you a bit of a sense check on certain things. Um, and we can do multiple stage audits if needed as well. Uh, good questions, you guys. Thank you so much for coming, sending these through. I'm going as fast as I can. We will make sure that we send you answers in the, with the recording if I don't get to all of these because we're almost on 1030. Do we have industry specific experts, i.e. agriculture? Yes, we do. We have a whole range of experts, including agriculture and the other key industries happening here in New Zealand. So please let us know your needs and we'd be very happy to let you know what expertise we have in that space. Uh, if you have an existing TOY2 membership, will the new Elevate, cert Elevate certification be part of that membership? Absolutely. If your membership is one of our climate certification memberships, absolutely. You're getting access to that standard already. You're getting access to all the materials early to help you lift your ambitions so that you're really ready by the time we start certifying in 2025. All right, I'm going to do one last one, and then I promise we will send you answers with the recording. Last question. Um, do you see the carbon marks working in the automotive industry? 
Really good question. Um, we do work with range of players uh, across transportation, um, including some automotive industries. It uh, depends a little bit on where you are in that industry, what t what role you're playing, and whether um, greenhouse gas accounting is the most useful, or maybe more of a management system. We do both of those things. Um, but yes, absolutely, it's a way of doing your metrics, setting your targets, and taking responsibility for how we can decarbonize that industry. Really helpful. Um, we work with a lot of companies already. Thank you so much, everyone. We are at time. I really appreciate your time and your energy this morning or whenever you're watching this. We will be sending out the recording and we'll make sure that we're answering any of these questions that we didn't get to. Please check them in the Q&A quickly before you go. You can also always reach out to your account manager, um, reach out to us uh, directly if you don't already have a relationship with us. We'll give you some contact details in the email as well. We're always happy to talk and see how we can help you meet your needs. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day.